Welcome back to our channel. We just spent the last four weeks traveling around Egypt and we had a wonderful time. We really enjoyed everything Egypt had to offer. There's a lot to see in Egypt. Yes, um, there are a lot sure. of cultural sites, a lot of very, very nice, open-hearted and kind locals. Yes. There's some great food in Egypt, but Egypt also is not the easiest country no, to travel sure to. Not. There are some particular challenges. We just wanted to assemble a couple of tips that we felt could help you if you're planning your trip yeah. to Egypt to make your stay better, to make you get more out out of your holiday. The first tip, no, no, no. especially for women, is to dress appropriately. Egypt is a country with a very traditional culture, it has a Muslim culture, and especially for women, that means that it is appropriate to dress a bit more conservatively than you may be used to doing. Local ladies in Egypt conform with the hijab standard, which means that they yep. often wear a full-length robe that covers uh, their legs all the way through to their ankles, they have their arms covered, they wear a headscarf. Of course, by no means that is necessary. I mean, you don't need to wear like traditional Muslim uh, clothing. But it but, is useful yeah. to dress a little bit more conservatively than you would yep. be used to. I wore long trousers or um, a long skirt that covered my legs up until my ankles. What I found to be very easy is to just buy two scarves just like this one. And they're very cheap, they cost just a couple of dollars. Yeah, so. otherwise you may have some cleavage, which is not really um, something you would want in Egypt. People may stare a little bit and be like, what are you wearing? Because they're not used to seeing that. You know, men gi might give you more unwanted attention. You can wear pretty much anything you want, there are no laws. It's up to you, of course, but I found it to be a little nicer. Our next tip would be to do some research on the prices. If you know what prices are, chances are a lot less likely that you'll be ripped off. Now, we're not saying that people in Egypt are um, by nature dishonest or anything. No, but there are a few people who, who are dishonest. And the majority no gives you a fair, fair price, even gives you the local price most of yeah. the time. Yeah. But here and there, there might be people trying to rip you off. Um, Especially in the touristy places that yeah. you're likely going to visit. Indeed. What are like normal prices for buying a bottle of water, snacks, uh, getting some food, uh, going on tours, taxis, all that kind of stuff. For example, a bottle of water costs 50, uh, sorry, 50. Not five, 50. <laughs> five Egyptian pounds, uh, which is what we paid pretty much everywhere, except for one occasion where we paid 10 because it was at a really tourist site. Um, but we have been quoted prices from 5 all the way up to 30, 40 Egyptian pounds. Same thing goes for taxis, for example. Taxis are very cheap and we checked, for example, on Uber. When we were in Cairo, you could use Uber. We took one for 5 kilometers, it only cost us uh, two, two and a half euros. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, hello. How are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. Good. When you're trying to take a taxi at other sites or places where there's no Uber, they will quote you ridiculous prices, three, four, five times normal price. You know what's a normal price, then you can start haggling out and tell you, no, this is like a normal price, normally I pay this. Of course, I mean, you can't really expect to get the full local price all the time. And I, personally, I don't mind paying a bit more. I mean, what's, what's for 50 cents things. to me for, yeah. for certain things. Go into the shop if you need some water, take out the cash, take out a five Egyptian pounds note, go to the cash register, show them the water, give them the five pound yeah. note. Because if you're like, how much is it? You're giving people an opportunity yeah. um, to quote you more. And that brings us to our next tip. Everything can be haggled. Everything can be haggled. For example, this scarf in the market, I bought it for about 15% of the initial price that I was quoted. When we visited Karnak, which is one of the most famous and interesting temple complexes that we saw in all of Egypt, we went to have some tea right outside, right in front of the entrance to the temple yeah. complex. And one tea was 30 Egyptian pounds because it's a super it's a price touristy quarters. place. We asked like what's the price? And we it's started haggling and in the end we got two for 30. Yeah. which is still overpaying, but we were like, it's very touristy, we'll give you that. So the waiter was like, what are you doing? I mean, mm. I don't think he <laughs> encounters a lot of tourists that haggled, but he, he knew it was but very it was expensive. It was a ridiculous price. So I mean, tea, tea like that normally costs like 10 Egyptian pounds mm. and he was asking like three times the normal price. So yeah, maybe haggled. five, depending yeah. on where you get it. Probably um, if you go to a local place, even five. In addition to that, it's also very important to ask the price before you buy anything, before you get into a taxi, before you buy anything, before you get some drinks, before you get some food, before you take anything, ask what is the price. <coughs> if you get into the taxi and you arrive and he's asking for three, four, five hundred Egyptian pounds, maybe ten times the normal price, it will become very difficult to still haggle at that point. Also, be a little bit wary, a little bit wary, be kind and open 
but not naive and too trusting. Be a little bit wary of people in the streets that are coming to help you yeah. for something that seems too good to be true. For example, it happened to us a couple of times and we ran into someone in the street who was like, oh, hello, welcome to Egypt. A lot of people do that, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Egyptians are Most super kind. Most of the people kind. are very kind, just very interested in talking to you, learn how, who you are. They really like foreigners coming to their town and they're very proud of their country, which they rightfully can because it's such an amazing country. It's such an amazing country. But some of those people were also like, oh, where are you going? Well, there's a very nice mosque here around the corner. And then they don't just say, it's over there, but they say, come, come, I will show you. I am not a guide. That's like the tagline. Yeah, I, I have a shop here, I'm not a guide. Let me just quickly show you. And then halfway, as you're walking to it, you're like, I think this guy could well be a guide. You know, he shows you around the mosque a little bit, says, oh, you can go on top of the minaret, you can go on top of there. And then yeah. at the end, he will ask you for a tip because he show you around the place. People might try to take you to a tourism, off like a tourism office, uh, travel office, travel agency, where they get a commission to try and book you tours on it. Um, nothing really wrong with that, but I mean, it's not really a proper way to go about it. If you're looking for travel uh, arrangements, look for them yourself. Don't just let a random guy take you to some random office that you don't know. Don't let this scare you out of talking to locals, because that has been some of the best experiences we've yeah, had in Egypt, sure. have come from interacting um, with the people who live there with the locals, yes. but also be a little bit yeah. cautious and, and on guard. Be assertive and learn to say no, because a lot of people will come to you taxi drivers, people driving the horse carriages, people selling stuff. They will just come to you and come ask you for, to buy their stuff. We just keep walking, just say no thank you. And what Kim has been doing, that, and that works pretty well, is like no thank you, bye bye, which means you're ending the conversation. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, that really works. Don't do that like right away but no. i think what i do more is no i am not interested or something like that yeah. yeah that's what i do more i only say that no thank you bye bye if they're really like 10th yeah. time asking really just, really giving me a hard time be polite be firm um and i mean those people are just trying to make a living yeah. and provide for their family so Most don't be rude to them no. just be kind to them saying no thank you of course i mean if they keep following you and they keep harassing you just be more firm if it sounds too good to be true it probably is yes. for example at the valley of the kings there is this section this little bazaar before you get to the entrance ticket booth well our guide called it running the gauntlet a little <laughs> yeah. bit because okay, they will well, press you like pretty you, firmly like, please buy my, buy my souvenir hello, just one dollar oh, come into my shop come into my shop like, and they don't give up no. they don't give up for that was easy. the only place where it was like that like none yeah. of the other places in Egypt was like that but it was super touristy competition there is extremely high I get it you have to make a living yeah. but for example the point I'm trying to get to here is that um, they will say statue statue just one dollar one US dollar only one dollar but then if you were like oh my god that's the best deal of my life I need to buy this statue for myself for my mom for god knows who for my dog to yep. chew on and you're like one dollar okay that's fine and then they'll be like, no, 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 not, not this one, not this one, one dollar. This one, thirty dollars. They quote you a very low price to keep you engaged. Somebody offers you something for free. It might be like a little statue, like a little postcard, a little something. Don't accept it. Nothing is ever for free. They will give it to you for free and then they'll start asking you for tip or for money. There's no such thing as a free postcard. Nope. Egypt is a pretty big country. It has lots of things on offer. And our next tip would be be sure to know what you want to see and make sure that you time your visit for that as well. Uh, Egypt has uh, a winter season which is fairly mild, which is not really cold at all, and has a very, very hot summer where it's 40 degrees and then anything in between. If you want to visit the pyramids, if you want to visit like more of the historical sites, I would say January, February, March, uh, times like that, or a little bit time. earlier, like November, December, are really good times to visit because the temperature is very mild and it's not like scorching heat during the day. If you want to spend some time at the Red Sea, um, beach time, beach time whoop, whoop. spend some time in the pools, go to a nice all-in hotel, uh, swim a little bit in the ocean. January, February might not be the best time and admittedly we made, we kind of made a judgment error that we thought would be warmer by middle yeah. February but it was like still not warm enough to go swimming and just... We miscalculated it. Yeah, we miscalculated it. One thing to be a little bit careful of in Egypt in particular is stomach bugs. Yeah. The tap water has a lot of bacteria that our sensitive western stomachs aren't very used to and you will want to avoid those because they can make you very, very sick if you're not used to it. Yeah. So we definitely recommend eating local food, eating where the locals go, yeah. not just sticking to touristy spots. Go to places where there are a lot of locals eating there. Um, from the outside they might not always like immediately look like the perfectly clean place. The important thing is that a lot of people are eating there, everything is fresh. 
most of the times when we have been sick in the past it has been when we've gone to tourist places like eating these buffet style foods which might be there for hours on end um, also like eating uh, washed vegetables which are raw or not peeled Egypt more than a lot of other countries has this thing in the water and the revenge of the pharaoh the revenge of the stomach bug Last but not least, our bonus tip. A little bonus tip here. Bring your own Bring toilet paper. Value. Yes, make sure to always carry a full roll of toilet paper everywhere you go. In your day bag. Because even restaurants might not have toilet paper. So it's about a 50-50 chance that they don't have any toilet paper. If you go to like a more public toilet or a toilet near a temple or anything, no toilet paper at we all. We even stayed in some hotels where there was no toilet paper. Yeah. Um, where they just use a bidet, like this little sh -sh -sh -sh, where you can sh -sh -sh your butt until it's clean. If you're not nice. used to using it, it's nice. I yeah, would recommend using it, it's nice. You can use it, but I always spray half the bathroom when I do that. You need to learn to aim. Yeah. Aim it at the butthole. If you want to stick to your own ways, bring some toilet paper. Bring some toilet paper. So I think that is probably Brings it. Brings us to the end of this really incredible tips video. I mean, it's just the best video you could ever imagine. Making tips great again. Making tips great again. Anyway. Our tips are the best tips in the world. Actually, we just made it to India. If you see some monkeys around, this? well, we are in India and there's just monkeys on the roof. So this is what happens here. We just made to Varanasi for spending a couple of days in Delhi. We've already made one or two videos in India. So we're like jumping back and forth into time. But we just wanted to make this video first uh, <clears throat> to give you our best tips before we move on to our videos yeah. of India. We had a really, really good time in Egypt. We hope this video was useful for you. If you have some other good tips for people going to Egypt, be sure to leave them down below. If you have some questions, ask those as well in the comments. We will try to help you answer them as best as we can. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can follow our journey. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.